We're going to San Inez Valley for the weekend. It's mostly wine. There might be some beer in there. But come along for the adventure. Let's do this. Uh, San Inez is about a half an hour north of Santa Barbara. It's where Sideways was filmed. If they want to drink Merlot, we're drinking Merlot. No, if anybody orders Merlot, I'm leaving. I am not drinking any fucking Merlot! They have a bunch of vineyards there. They have some breweries you might try and hit. Um, but it's going to be mostly wine-focused, this trip. Santa Barbara Wine Valley is broken up into a couple sectors. There's San Inez, there's Lompoc, Buellton, Solving, Los Alamos, no. Is that a thing? I'm missing one area. But uh, Solving is like a Dutch town. Yeah, it's like yeah. a little Dutch village. Little windmills and things like that. Uh, we are staying in there, which is cool. A lot of tasting rooms, a lot of good restaurants. I also don't know how much I'm gonna be able to record because we're going to a lot of like private, like what did you call them, like private appointments? Yeah. Uh, because where she works, they have a winemakers that come in and they do like tastings there a lot. And we're able to get like cool little private tastings and stuff at some a lot of places up there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do some gorilla shots on my, my phone, but I feel weird bringing this camera in because I just don't know when I want to be intrusive and they're inviting us into their place. The first stop we're gonna go to is Firestone Walker Brewery. I think their main location is in Paso Robles. Paso Robles. We're going to the one in Buellton. You may have heard of Pale 31, Union Jack. Um, it's one of the bigger breweries in California. And get some lunch there and start our journey there. So last time we were here, which was for like a second, we popped in just to see what it was, and it was so freaking crowded. We didn't. We left. Yeah. We'll uh, see. It looks okay today. We got, we got a spot right up front. Sours. There was other stuff there too, and I just I saw the list, and she came over, and I was like, "Nah, just those." Uh, so this is the last six on the list. I'll throw a screenshot right now on what they are. So we have the little opal farmhouse ale aged in barrels, sour opal American style goose, agrestic and American wild ale, creaky bones of Flanders red ale, Breda rose, or this sort of Breda Weiss with additional raspberries, and Reginald Brett, a strong wild ale that's big malty. Little opal. That's nice. It's. Really subtle bread. It's more funky than sour, I'd say. Yeah. But it's nice. It's farmhousey for sure. That's nice. The um, sour opal. That's a goose. It's a wild ale. Oh, that's really nice. I think they blended that really well. It's like sour, but not like too sour. It's not too aggressive. Complex. Kind of fruity. It's like Damn, peachy. Yeah, really good. There, actually. The Flanders Red Ale, the Flanders style. It has cherries in it, which is cool. Soft acidity, these all have pretty soft acidity, I noticed. I love the raspberries in that. Again, soft acidity, the raspberries are really popping through. Yeah, that's strong. It has like a barley wine sort of thing to it, but it has a little acidity to it. It's really cool. I think my favorite might be the Goose. That's the, what the, I was the wild ale. Say. I think this really subtle city, really complex. It's really delicious. And this is my other one here, my favorite, this raspberry one. I think my favorite's this one and this one. Yeah. Really good sours. I had the sours before and thought they were okay. That was like two, three years ago. But these are all fantastic. The whole the room back here. So the next stop we're going to go to is Pence Wine, and it's one of our like appointments, private little tastings that we have. 
So I'm gonna griddle the style a little bit if I can with my phone. Maybe just stroll the, the wine glass and things like that. But uh, but yeah, shake, rattle, and roll, right? That was awesome. I did not expect that. It's a full private tour, full one-on-one -on -one description of all the wines just for us. There was no one else there. <laughs> it was incredible. So this guy, he, he starts off and he just, we park, there's no one there. And all of a sudden this dude just runs out with two glasses of wine <laughs> and he goes, hey, how's it going? I'm Josh. Let me show you around and get in this John Deere tractor thing or John Deere, uh, what do you call those? Four wheeler. He called it the alligator. The alligator, the four wheeler. And just drove us around the, the vineyard and showed us his grapes and, uh, or, the, or the vines, I should say. Tasted the wine, went through a big a whole flight Such of it. Such good wine. Such good wine, all, all natural wine, which you won't find that often now in this area. Really, really cool. Now we're on to Lo-Fi, another appointment that we have. Now this is not at a vineyard, right? We think yeah. it's just at like, 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 a, a, like a tasting warehouse. warehouse, yeah. So I love Lo-Fi wine, natural wine. Natural wine, I would describe as like the lambic sours to beer. Whereas like a lot of wines made with pitch yeast, you know, that's fine. And you get some good wine that way, no, no doubt. But natural wine, you get crazy complex, complex flavors. You get like pretendomyces, you get lactobacillus, like it shines. Anyone who likes sour and lambic beers would love natural wine, especially French natural wine. That stuff gets funky. I keep saying natural wine wrong. A little bit. What is it, Sarah? So natural wine, what you're saying for the most part is true. However, some people believe in natural wine to also not pitch sulfites. Um, oh, right. I should say native yeast fermented. Yeah. And you, so... Biodynamic? Like, Pence pitches sulfites. Very small very, amounts. Yeah, it was like very low amounts. And not yeah. until way later in the process. You're so right. That the wine gets full places. Natural wine is incorrect. You're right. It's native fermented yeast. So whatever's on the grapes, skins, ferments the grapes. Clar clarifying. It's good to clarify. That place was rad. Let's go to the inside right now. So that place was awesome. Uh, they don't have a vineyard. They have their own warehouse, they press their own grapes there, they buy the grapes from other places. Hands down, the best natural fermentative stuff you're gonna find. I would say, Sarah, you might agree with me, the closest to French style wine you can possibly find in California. Probably, I mean, right? I don't, there's so many wineries. There are, at least, okay, fine, that we have tasted. Yes. That we have tasted, it, and she has, she works at a wine place. Next, we're going to Ryan Rourke. Natural wine, natural fermented stuff again. So this guy, uh, supposedly first started out, like slept on a cot in his warehouse <laughs> to like make his wine, just like salt of the earth, dude. Super cool. Uh, head there now. This is definitely off the beaten path for wine tasting. <laughs> we are not, except for the first one, we are not in vineyards. I think we found it. I think it's good. So thank God for spit buckets. Because mm. oh. that dude poured some good wine. He poured us some cider. So the cool thing is, is that so he made this cider and then he just did it for himself and he made like a sparkling version of it and it was amazing. It's really good. Very natural, With very his friend like, who has family in Bath. Correct. So it's very like Cedra, natural cider, funky, really, really cool. Now we're going to end our night. Before dinner, we're going to go to a brewery, Figaro Mountain Brewery. We went here once before uh, and we're going back again.
just remember that we went to a Figueroa Mountain location on one of our beer adventures. So I forgot about that. But I got a flight. That's all the hoppy stuff. Which I kind of regret. I can't, the first one I panicked and I got all sour flight. Panicked again and got IPAs. She got a Pilsner, a Bohemian Pilsner, and it tastes delicious. I should have got that. After wine tasting, what was I doing? So I think I'm gonna roll this over into the next day, tomorrow, and uh, yeah, let's, let's keep it going. Today's Saturday, tomorrow's Sunday. Let's keep it going. Let's keep the party going.